funny crafting journey here that journey chick on instagram i took the day off from work my whole body hurts i don't i don't have fibromyalgia or anything like that i just think i i don't know i went to physical therapy for an hour yesterday and i worked really really hard and everything hurts and that's all it is it's just you know back muscles knees I mean, i'm old <laughs> i'm feeling my age that's what it is i'm feeling my age so i promised you guys yesterday uh the new hot that i would show you the book that i made it out of this i actually got this at um you could purchase it probably anywhere. This it, the tag says I got it at Hobby Lobby. Um, it's a leisure arts book called Slouchy Beanies Create Styles for Every Day. Also has head, some head wraps in here. Um, I, it cost the nine ninety nine when I bought it, and I probably had a coupon. I don't generally like to pay full price for anything, but I'll show you. This one is. Uh, towards the back I think wait a minute which one was it it's this one here yeah so it's the uh, it's called the newsboy beanie here's the picture of it does it resemble the picture I think mine's better because uh, it sparkles so that's the book um, it's a leisure arts book. You can you can probably get it off of the Amazon fairly cheaply. All right, let's diamond paint, diamond painting, diamond painting. Oh. oh, that hurts. I just need to like I took some Motrin. I'm waiting for it to kick in. Um, I'm gonna drink my coffee. I play with my kitties today. Oh my God, I love my kitties. Um, so <laughs> today, the national day is, it kind of goes along with my mood, I guess. I don't know. National Eat Your Vegetables Day. You, you're supposed to get four to five servings of vegetables, fruits and vegetables every day. I don't think I sometimes even get one. Well, that's not true. I do try to get like a fruit in every day. <clears throat> Yesterday I actually had for lunch I had cottage cheese with some blueberries and raspberries and blackberries. It was delicious. But my stomach did not like all those berries. Yeah. Um, and then I had a banana later on. But actual like vegetables like broccoli and like I like them. I just don't eat them that often now well I've been uh, I've been eating healthy choice meals a lot for dinner and they do have a lot of vegetables in them now that I'm thinking about it but I'm still not don't think I'm getting four to five servings a day so they're recommending that like for breakfast you have a serving of vegetables no <laughs> well they're they're you know they're like they say replace the muffin with a smoothie now that makes sense I probably could do that if I were motivated enough to, to have a vegetable for breakfast I don't know guys I think that's asking a lot but and then like instead of having a white potato have a sweet potato it's got way more vitamins in it than the white potato, but doesn't the white potato just taste yummy with butter and cheese? In fact, that's what I think I want to have for dinner. I know I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm just not a vegetable person. I like to, here's what I like to do. I'll, I like to get a big bowl, put some baby carrots in there and some uh, broccoli and maybe some other vegetables put some olive oil in there, some salt and pepper, and mix them all up, and then roast them in the oven. Oh, amazing, amazing. That's delicious, and I do that every now and then. Um, yeah, I like. that's how I like to eat my vegetables, yeah. Yeah, so 
Um, I hope you had a good time on the live last night. I was doing my loom knitting and um, I think by now you kind of figured out I'm just, I'm not a, I'm not really a tutorial type channel. Um, I would like to be, I wish I was good enough at one craft or the other to say that I could do a tutorial. I could with diamond painting, but um, as far as loom knitting, it's just, it's really, so I'm getting into the more advanced stitches and so it's something I'm still learning. I can certainly teach you guys the beginner stuff, um, but now, you know, so that's why my channel name is Crafting Journey because I'm always journeying into new crafts and, and trying to get better at them. Um, but, you know, if it's something, you know, if loom knitting is something you want to learn, I can certainly recommend um, good tutorial channels for that. And my favorite would be Wambui Made It. And I'll put that, I'll spell that out here, Wambui Made It. Um, and I'll put, I'll put one of her videos here. Uh, she's, she's taking a little break right now. Um, she'll be back soon, but she's got a lot of great loom knitting tutorials. Um, yep. So, you know, just when you watch me, don't watch with any great expectations of learning some new skill. <laughs> because I'm more in the entertainment realm. Um, yeah, no kitty videos, no cat capers today. I did not film yesterday. Uh, Wednesdays are such a busy, busy day for me. You know, I work, uh, go to physical therapy. By the time I got home from work and therapy, it was five o'clock. You know, I had the live at six um i had to take care of the animals you know clean the litter box feed them you know get tootsie out um yeah <laughs> so, i do have an unboxing that i'm going to be doing i got there was a craftably diamond painting on my doorstep when i got home Woo so I, I'll be doing that uh, maybe later today. I'll get it done. I really want to see the painting. It's not an Alice. It's for next year's theme, which will be landscapes. Next year, I'm going to be doing the year of landscapes. Um, I figure by December, I'll just be so Alice out. <laughs> I don't know. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, uh, this will be my eighth one right here. This is my eighth Alice painting. And I have a ninth one that um, that's a whip. Um, that I'll get out one of these days. Um, I haven't forgotten about it. Certainly not. That's the uh, Dormouse that I started. He's at the uh, tea party, the Alice tea party. Oh my goodness. Could somebody send over a tall, dark, handsome man to give me like a full body massage? That would feel terrific. But last night, I it was like 10.30 or so, and I was so, you know, I, I really was feeling the soreness set in. So I filled up the tub with hot water and you know, just sat and soaked in the tub for a little while. It did feel really great. But when I went to get out, literally, I just stood up. Now, some of you are like, oh, well, so what? This is a big deal for me. After I had this knee surgery initially, this partial knee replacement, I, could, I didn't have the strength to get myself up out of a bathtub. But now I just stood up and I was like, oh, you know, I did it. Um, I just need to get myself back into shape. Yeah. So I'm very proud of myself. But yesterday, oh my God, it was so hot. Uh, when I got in my car, the thermometer in the car, and I had parked 
under a tree purposely because I knew it was going to be a really hot day. Um, my thermometer read 101 degrees. Now you guys out there in Vegas are going, ah, that's, you know, spring weather. <laughs> Not here. Not in Wichita. But, it, you know, Wichita is, is an interesting place to live. It gets really, really cold in the winter and uh, really, really hot in the summer. Um, you know, I wanted a place where I have all four seasons and uh, I get that here. Although I will tell you that usually, um, you know, I've been here a couple of years, you don't see a lot of fall. Like it'll go from summer, almost sometimes right into winter, um, to the colder weather. It just kind of skips over fall, <laughs> like the changing of the leaves and all that. You don't see a lot of that here in Wichita. But at least I haven't so far. How did I forget the black ones there? Like a whole section of the black is not done. Huh. We should do judge, jury, and journey. So let me just do a little recap here for um, for everybody. We I am um, covering the FSU, which is the Florida State University law professor murder trial. Now, uh, he was uh, murdered in his driveway. He had left this gymnasium, the premier gym, goes home, pulls into his driveway. Two, two men pull in, in a car, pull up behind him in the driveway. One of them gets out, shoots him twice in the head, dead. And we're learning slowly but surely that there's some sort of grand conspiracy between his ex-wife's family and these two men to commit his murder. All because his ex-wife wants custody of the kids and wants to move the kids from Tallahassee to South Florida. And I got to tell you, you know, I was a Floridian for 40 something years. Tallahassee, the difference between Tallahassee and South Florida is like night and day. Totally different, totally different pe kind of people, totally different vibe. Um, you know, it's a laid back, Tallahassee's just laid back, small town. Even though there's a, a huge university there, it's still a very small town. It's the capital of the state of Florida but it's still got that small town feeling versus South Florida was just hustling, bustling, apparently full of gangsters. Um, <laughs> and you know, the nightlife is, it, it's just way, way different. The people are different. Um, and I found that to be true with myself, even, you know, at one point I lived on the East coast of Florida for many, many years my, until my children grew up. Um, and then I moved to the west coast of Florida, night and day. So what you find in Florida is that a lot of the retirees will uh, from the New York area, New York, New Jersey, the Northeast, they will they will retire down to South Florida on the east coast. Um, now on the west coast, you have people from the Midwest that have decided they want to live in Florida. So, so you've got all these, it's just two different worlds, like from east to west coast and from north to south, um, Florida. So, so we know that his ex-wife, her family was in South Florida. She grew up in South Florida. She went to the University of Miami Law School. She, um, she wanted her kids to be in South Florida. She wanted to go to South Florida. So. So yesterday on the stand, we got, um, so one of those two men, uh, they're both arrested. The one man, Luis Rivera, that's Luis Rivera and Sergio Garcia. Now who's on trial? Sergio Garcia is on trial and Catherine Magbanoa. Those are the two defendants in this case. Luis Rivera is not a defendant in this case. And uh, here's why. 
when they went to arrest these men, Louis Revere was already in jail, serving a 12 and a half year sentence for racketeering. Um, and he's in a federal prison. So um, he also, so he decides, you know, he's going to turn state's evidence, which is, means he's going to testify against the other guy that was in the car and Catherine Magbanoa, who is the other guy's mother of his children. So in exchange for a plea to second degree murder and a 19 year sentence to run concurrently with the 12 and a half year sentence, which means technically he only got like a six and a half years added on for this murder. Um, and he's only in his thirties. He'll be with gain time. This man will be out in, in before he's 50 years old. But, but we find out when he takes the stand that he also has a violation of probation charges pending and a possession of cocaine charges, which could add, both of those could add up to 15 years to his sentence. Now, you know, a judge may just say, let's run that concurrently, or he may add it on. You know, it's usually up to the judge, but yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I don't suspect he's going to spend that much time in jail. Now, one of the things during his testimony uh, that came out was that he claims to have a diagnosis of bipolar and schizophrenia. I did, and, and, but he's not on any medications. Now, we know from the last trial what schizophrenia looks like. This guy doesn't look schizophrenic. And if he's not on medication, there are certain things that you would see that would say, oh, you're schizophrenic. I don't see that with this guy. He's very soft-spoken, very laid back, claims that he cannot read or write, even though he graduated from high school down in um, South Florida. He grew up in South Florida, graduated from high school. He went to this technical school and um, they said, well, how do you explain? How did you graduate? He goes, I had a tutor that sat with me right next to, next to me um, during the exam, you know? And then um, at one point, the defense attorney points out to Mr. Rivera, he says, you know, between this particular time in 2014 and this particular time in 2014, which is when the murder occurred, you got 7,000 blah, blah, blah text back and forth. If you can't read or write, how, well, how did you, how were you texting? And I thought, ooh, that's a good question. And <laughs> this guy is smart. Let me tell you, he's smart. He goes, I just, you can do talk to text, which I hate, by the way, because it always comes out wrong. So he says, he explains, oh, I was doing talk to text. He goes, ah, oh. the defense attorney goes, oh, okay. But how are you reading the text that you got? Um, and I forget what his explanation was. He says, well, I, I can read at a third grade level. Um, I don't know. I think he can read or write. And I think the reason, he, I think the reason he was saying is because they were, you know, he would say very often during his testimony, I don't remember, I don't remember. And there's things, you know, there's documents that you can show a person to refresh their recollection. And they can look at it and go, oh, now I remember. Well, at one point, they show him a document and he's like, I can't read or write. So now they can no longer impeach him with a document um, unless they actually read it to him. Um, and some of this is quite lengthy. So uh, the rules state that you could do it outside the presence of the jury. So we'd, the judge would have to excuse the jury, have the lawyer read to this guy so, some document to refresh his recollection and then bring the jury back in. And the judge is like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm like, okay. He's like, you guys figure out another way because I'm not doing that. Very clever on the part of um, Mr. Rivera. So anyway, he knows Sergio Garcia because they, uh, that's his best friend 
they've hung out uh, daily. They've known each other since they were young kids. Um, and he knew Catherine McBanawa because that was Sergio's wife. Now, I don't think they were ever legally married, but this Rivera guy knew her as his wife or uh, wifey is uh, a term that was being bantered around. Um, another interesting thing is that we find out that Luis Rivera is five foot four and Sergio Garcia is six foot one. So uh, we can certainly tell the difference between who's who here. Um, so he did admit that at the time that this crime was committed, Catherine McBanawa was dating the dentist. He, he said, yes, uh, Catherine McBanawa and Sergio Garcia were off and on. And at this point, they were off and she was dating the dentist. Um, so he says, I was approached by, let me get another let me get another diamond. He says, I was approached by Sergio Garcia um, and he asked me to do a job. And uh, I said, okay. He didn't know what the job was, but he just gets in the car and goes. So Sergio, now, um, as you recall, these two made two trips to Tallahassee. So, so on this first trip, Sergio allegedly comes up to Lewis and says, hey, I got to do a job. Come with me. And um, Serge, Lewis says, well, this was my best friend. I trusted him. He says, I'm going to do a job. Yeah, I'm going to go with him. I, you know, whatever it is. So <laughs> they get some alcohol and some cocaine and they get, get on the road. Um, I can't find the drill that I'm looking for. Here it is. I think this is it. J, J, yeah. Um, <laughs> lots of cocaine. This guy, Rivera, testified he's been doing cocaine all of his life, since he was 10 or something like that. I don't know, something ridiculous. Like, oh, that's, that's a lot of cocaine. You'd think your nose would be just fried, fried. Um, so anyway, so he gets in the car with him and they take off. Sergio had rented the car. Um, he said they both had guns. They both had pieces um, because they were head of these gangs. They were This guy, Luis Rivera, was the primero of the Latin Kings. Apparently, Latin Kings is this huge gang organization. It's, it's all over the country. There's thousands of chapters of this Latin King, and he is the primero, which means the, head, the top guy of the North Miami Latin Kings. And... Um, the defense attorney asked him at one point, so how many people are how many people are in the Latin Kings? And the Rivera looked at him and said, Is that a serious question? Are you really asking me that question? And he's like, Yeah, I want to know. And he's like, thousands. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> but in the North Miami chapter, there's probably more like a hundred. Um, we find out. And we also find out that he's no longer the primero of the Latin Kings. He's no longer a Latin King because they have a code of silence. You're, you're not allowed to rat anyone out. And if you do, they will put a hit out on you. And, and Rivera said, I'm no longer a Latin King. And yes, I get death threats constantly and people are in jail trying to kill me. Yikes. It's pretty scary when you think about it, you know, wow. Um, and so he, but he's in jail, he's in federal prison in some other, like out in Arizona or something. I don't know. Um, all right. So we're going back to the first trip to Tallahassee. So sort of about halfway through the trip, he learns that uh, the purpose of the trip is that they're going to go kill a man. Um, and that he's going, his, that he, you know, he was hired, Garcia was hired to do this. Um, but he said, you know, if you help me, I'll give you 35 grand. 
So he's like, okay. So, you know, he said at first he assumed when Sergio said, we're going to go do a job that it was going to be a robbery. But he finds out sort of about halfway through the trip that it's not going to be a robbery. It's going to be a murder. Um, and it's because, um, I'm trying to quote him, because a lady wanted her kids back. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so he said Garcia had a piece of paper that had a picture of this guy and his address. That is all the information they had. A picture of Dan Markell and Dan Markell's address. So they head to Tallahassee. They rent a hotel room when they get there because, you know, it's late in the evening. They get up early the next morning and they go to Dan, they go to the address, Dan Markell's address. And uh, he's not home. <laughs> so he's not home. So they park in this park nearby where they can actually see his uh, comings and goings. And um, he, what they do see, they don't see Dan Markell, but what they do see is a woman um, walking down the sidewalk with two children. And um, she's looking at the vehicle and then she gets on the phone. So now they're scared. They're like, I mean, who are Garcia? Rivera is scared. He's like, why is she looking at us? Why is she on her phone? We need to get out of here. Um, Garcia tells him, hey, that's the lady who hired us. That's the lady with the kids. So when they see her on the phone, they drive away. So they um, they decide, you know, we can't find him. Um, and Rivera testifies that he kind of did. He says, like, I, I really don't want to kill this guy. I don't, you know, he's got kids. I, you know, let's just go back. So they, they return back home. Um, so in the meantime, um, Rivera has a job. He is working as a mason, mason, he does masonry. I don't know how to say it, but he, um, so he's a construction worker and he got his friend Garcia a job as a construction worker. Um, and he was also aware that Catherine Magbanawa was, um, working in the nightclubs at night. And um, he said that Garcia was a very good father. Like when she would go to the nightclubs at night to work, he would watch the kids. Um, even though they weren't together, he was a very responsible father and um, he would take very good care of his children. So when Catherine would go to work, uh, he would watch the kids. There's like, Gum on this. Okay. Um, so he, uh, on the way back, he Sergio gets on the phone with Catherine Magbanawa, and um, she tells him, and he could hear her. He said, "My the car windows were, were rolled up. I could hear her end of the conversation, and she's like, guess, listen, guys, you got to get this job done.' Um, so." Garcia approaches him about six weeks later and says to him, we got to get this job done. So they, so Lewis goes and rents a car. And of course, you know, he's signing this document. And uh, so the, the attorneys ask him, you know, you can't read or write how we're, you know, he's like, well, I had, wherever I go, like when we check into the hotels or, you know, when I was renting the car, I have the people read it to me and then I just sign it. Um, and the people, you know, will fill it out for me if I tell them what to put. <laughs> this is the head of the Latin Kings. He can't read or write. I'm like, this is, this guy's impressive. 
Wow. I guess reading or writing is not at a requirement uh, to be ahead of a gang. Oh, so. <laughs> so they head to Tallahassee a second time. Same thing. They're doing coke. They're doing, um, they're drinking. They're going 90 miles an hour. They get stopped by a cop in Gainesville and get a ticket. But the cop doesn't, you know, it's nine o'clock in the morning in Gainesville. It doesn't suspect that they're drinking and doing cocaine. Now, I don't know how that is, but okay. Um, so they just, continue on their merry way and at some point uh in tallahassee um they're driving the car and sergio's gun accidentally misfires and like goes through the engine of this car immediately disables the car so now they're calling a friend of theirs up in tallahassee that they know who's a drug dealer and he comes out with his car and him and Sergio go to an auto parts store. He gets something to come out and fix the car, and they fix it, and they go on their merry way. <sighs> like, what? <laughs> yes, just call the local drug dealer. Because there's these Latin kings everywhere. And that was one of the points the defense was turning to make. Louis, couldn't you have just picked up the phone as the primero of the Latin kings and called the Latin kings in... Tallahassee and had them commit the murder and he's like I don't know anybody in Tallahassee I don't yeah there's Latin Kings there but I don't know any of them well apparently he knew this drug dealer because he later on he testifies that they spent all their money they started at Louis Sergio when they started the trip had between two and five thousand dollars he gave Rivera a couple hundred spending money and they spent a lot of money on drugs while they were there um, do it with this drug dealer and then returned home and and as we know one of the first things they did after the murder and they get back to south florida is they go through that atm and rivera withdraws a bunch of money out of his account they go out that night and start partying and celebrating i'm like oh my god oh <laughs> so uh when they get to tallahassee they check into a hotel the next morning this is the second trip now they um go back to dan markell's address and they sit in the park and they wait for him to pull out of the driveway and then they follow him they follow him to the daycare uh, where he drops off the kids then they follow him to the gym and we've seen the footage of them at the gym uh, then they follow him back home. They pull up into the driveway. Now, Lewis said that originally uh, he was supposed to be the shooter, but this day he was driving the vehicle. So they pull up behind Dan Markell. Sergio gets out of the car, walks around with his arms straight out, boom, boom, fires twice, gets doesn't touch anything, gets back in the vehicle, they back out, they leave, they head back to South Florida. That's the testimony. <sighs> wow. So. I'm trying to see how we're doing on time. He says that they dumped the gun off a bridge into a lake, but he doesn't remember where. Now, he did drive around with one of the police after he you know, he decided to testify against his good buddy, um, but they couldn't find the gun. He couldn't find the exact spot where they threw the gun. And then the first call after the murder was Sergio Garcia calling Katie Magbanoa. Now this time he couldn't hear Katie's end of the story, end of the conversation, but he's, Sergio said, it's done. And apparently um, Catherine Magbanoa, according to Sergio said, I know. I already know or something like that um, so then they ask well when are we going to get our money and she tells them tomorrow I'll get you your money tomorrow and true to her word the next day he gets his $35,000 uh, Sigrid uh, Garcia gets $40,000 
Katie gets 25. So it was a hundred grand to commit this murder. Katie gets a hundred grand. She keeps 25, gives 75 to them to split. Yeah. And then apparently, um, when Sergio gives the 35,000 to him, he gives him an extra 2000. And he said they were, it was like, it was in a brown paper bag. Um, there were hundred dollar bills that were stapled into stacks of thousands. So he got 35 stacks or 37 stacks. I never heard of stapling money. So he goes out and buys a motorcycle for himself. And a po so apparently as a, the primero of the Latin Kings, he is supposed to give a portion of the proceeds of his criminal activity to the treasurer of the Latin Kings. Now, I don't know if he did that because at one point he says this was separate from the Latin Kings. So I don't know. I don't know if he just kept all the money and there's pictures of, um, cause Garcia bought a car and a motorcycle. So now there's pictures of the motorcycles and the car and it was a nice, it was a nice looking car. I don't think it was brand new, but, um, anyway, uh, what else? I think that's kind of it. He's still on the stand. I haven't finished listening to all of the testimony, but I'm into like uh, the cross examination where they're just trying to discredit him with various, you know, and if there, I'll listen to the rest of it and there, if there's anything earth shattering, I'll bring it to you. But, um, you know, he says he's been selling drugs his entire life. Um, yeah. So I think that, I think that was it. Yep. 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 So I will tell you, uh, you know, what else he has to say, if it's anything, um, worth telling. Now, does he, does he come off as credible? Cause one of the things the jury's going to have to do is assess his credibility and I got to tell you, this guy's kind of a shady character. You know, we know he's a career criminal. Um, and so can you really believe everything he's saying? I, I don't know if, I don't know. I really don't. Um, I don't know if I believe it. It could have been him committing the murder, I think. But either way, I think Garcia, you know, he puts Garcia in the car with him. So whether it's him killing Dan Markell or Garcia killing Dan Markell, one of the two of them killed Dan Markell, and they were both in that vehicle when it happened. So um, either way, I think Sergio Garcia, as a juror, I would believe that he's guilty of this murder. Um I don't know about Catherine. At this, at this point, there's not a lot of evidence about Catherine Magmanoa. Now, we also know that there are many, many tapes of cell phone conversations um, that we may possibly hear. I think at one point, the, the prosecution said they had 45 tapes that they were going to let the, the jury listen to. And the judge was like rolling his eyes. Um, <laughs> So I'm curious to when we get to listen to those tapes, what's on those tapes? Because we know that the um, Wendy Adelson's phone was uh, bugged by the police at one point. So was Charlie Adelson's phone. I think the um, the mother Wendy's mother's phone was bugged. So we're going to hear a lot of that um, over and above any hearsay objections because it's not being brought in for the truth of the matter asserted. So we don't have to believe everything that's being said in those conversations, but we can sort of ascertain what the state of mind was of the different people. And, you know, this is all legal talk, but in the end, the jury is going to hear it and they're going to think what they think. Um, so, this day in history, another uh, long story, but I'm going to shorten it real quick <laughs> because um, I could do a whole series of um, shows just on this alone. So back in 1972, on June 17th, 
In the early morning hours, five men are arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel. This starts this whole big hoopla that ultimately ends in the resignation of the President of the United States, Richard Nixon. The only president to ever resign from office. It was the Watergate scandal. I can't even begin to get into the whole thing. But it starts with this break-in that occurred on this day in history. Um, all by men all that we find out were all hired by I can't I can't even explain it um yeah it, it just gets really really complicated it, it was a very complicated crime with lots of involvement at lots of levels including the president um who you know was running for re-election um and he did get reelected, which is the weird thing. He gets reelected, but he ultimately, because um, this thing doesn't stop just because he's reelected, the investigation goes further. There's people, there's a whole trial. It's, and so it ends up in his resignation. So, the Watergate scandal. So, guys, have a great Thursday. Um, I'm going to put some heat on my back, relax, uh, maybe do some crafting, maybe do my unboxing, but you know, I, like I said, I took the day off, play with my kitties, play with my doggy, and uh, I will see you tomorrow in the morning show. I love you all. Bye.